Hello everyone and welcome to my General Hospital official channel. I hope everyone is having a wonderful day. Before we begin, please hit the subscribe button and give this video a thumbs up. When we learned that General Hospital was trying to recast Lulu, we didn't expect it to come at the same time the show revealed she was dying. And, while it's possible that the ABC soap is planning to replace her to tell a final plot when she dies, we're guessing they have something different in mind. Instead, it appears that they will use it as a justification to bring back not only her, but also her brother, we know Lucky is returning, and at first glance, it appears like Lulu's poor health may be the reason. Maybe he'd donate some of his liver to save her. Except it didn't work the first time around. In reality, that is why Nicholas appeared. She needed a bone marrow transplant after being diagnosed with a plastic anemia, and her brother Lucky was not a match. Laura told everyone about her second son, Nicholas, who arrived to town and was a match, donating his bone marrow. So, while Lulu's dilemma may be the catalyst for Lucky's return, it will most likely be to say goodbye rather than help her. Unless they find a donor to save her life. Someone they already know is a match. Somebody like Nicholas. Sending characters to prison is a guaranteed method to get them off the canvas for a while, but when those characters are large and important enough on a show, there almost always is a loophole that allows them to escape. And it may be Nicholas. At the very least, it could be the starting point. Laura is unlikely to try to get him released from prison, after all, she was the one who encouraged him to atone for his actions, but she might be able to pull some threads, call in a few favors, and get Nicholas transported back to Pentonville. That way, he could give a portion of his liver to Lulu, saving her life. And, once Nicholas is back serving time in town, we'll be able to see folks interact with him much more frequently, giving the show a decent chance to work out how to get him out of prison and back on the canvas. If nothing else, Ava could really use a friend right now. Sure, she and Nina are warming up again, but we're betting Kate's insane fixation with Sunny will do her no favors. It's time for a wealthy, powerful ally to protect her from Sunny's anger. TJ and Molly are preparing to bury their daughter today. Molly receives a text and informs him that Stella and the family are on their way. Molly feels they should stop referring to their child as their baby. She believes their baby needs a name. Jordan, Curtis, Marshall, and Stella come, and Jordan assures Molly and TJ that they are here for them and will get through this together. Molly says she has one thing to accomplish before the burial and must do it alone. She hugs TJ before leaving. Jordan inquires if something is wrong. TJ believes that starting with a minor modification is sufficient. Molly arrives to Alexis' apartment. Christina, who was previously clothed in pajamas, has changed into funeral attire. Christina notices Molly arrived early and without TJ. Molly wanted to tell them that she and TJ had named the baby. Christina blurts, without me? Molly claims it was necessary for the birth certificate and to bury her, so they named her Irene Marie after TJ's grandmother. Christina claims that isn't what I would have named her. Alexis begs them not to fight today. There comes a sudden knock on the door. Alexis responds, and it's Kate's. Kate's claims he's come for Christina. Alexis inquires if he is arresting her again. He says he has questions and wants her to come to the station. Alexis is outraged and informs him that they will bury the baby today. Kate's continues, the baby Christina killed while trying to kill his witness? He says Christina can accompany him or he can take them all in and let their family to bury their dead without them. Alexis informs Kate's that he cannot show up here and make demands. She reminds him that the court's contract requires him to contact her client and schedule official appointments. She asks Molly to get the papers from her case. She also claims that he has no new evidence with which to interview Christina. Kate's explains that Ava filed a sworn statement this morning claiming Christina attempted to kill her, so that is all he needs to pursue Christina, which he will. Alexis tells him not today, that he should learn how the law works, and then shows him the door. Alexis pledges Christina that she would do everything she can to protect her. Meanwhile, Molly glances over the materials her mother requested and appears dispassionate. Back at TJ and Molly's, TJ tells his family that he and Molly have been discussing the name of their kid for several months. This name needed to be great. 
he believes choosing a name became more difficult when they lost her before meeting her. They recognized they couldn't bury their daughter without a name, as Aunt Stella pointed out the other day when she mentioned her sister Irene. She offered Molly the idea of naming their daughter Irene Marie. Marshall is moved, and Stella is so moved to tears that she rushes into the hall, claiming she needs to check on some deliveries. Curtis emerges to soothe her. Later, Stella and Curtis return, bringing some bagels that had finally arrived. Stella tells TJ how much she loves him and embraces him. In the gallery, Joss and Trina are dressed for the funeral. They discuss Ava's current condition. Joss anticipates Ava's incarceration, but Trina isn't giving up hope just yet. Joss can't believe Trina believes she'll get out of this unscathed. According to Trina, Ava has not yet been tried or convicted and, like everyone else, deserves her day in court. Trina can see that Joss disagrees and has already made up her mind. Joss admits she despised Ava. Trina understands that many others do, but what is the underlying issue behind Joss' problem? Joss responds, you. Trina cannot believe Joss has an issue with her. Joss adores her, despises Ava, and has a struggle with sticking by her no matter what. Trina said she would do that for any friend. Joss doesn't understand why she and Ava are in the same friendship group. Trina claims that her and Ava's situations are not the same, and she is not stupid, she is aware that Ava has committed horrific acts. Joss claims she's continuing doing terrible things and wonders how many people Ava has to damage before she doubts their friendship. Trina replies, as if there aren't plenty of people in your life you look the other way for. At that point, Ava enters the gallery. She realizes she's interrupting. Joss reveals that they will bury TJ and Molly's kid today. Ava advises Trina to attend the funeral and manage work, but Trina tells Joss to go and arrange a ride share. Joss informs Ava that if it had been her in that room, she would have gone out the window. Trina apologizes for Joss on her own, but Ava warns her not to apologize for anybody else. Trina learned that Christina had been jailed for attempting to kill her, but Ava never mentioned it when she visited her in jail. Trina inquires whether Ava lied to her or the cops. Ava claims she is not supposed to discuss about the matter. Trina claims she just defended herself to Joss, who believes she's unworthy of her relationship. Ava says she does not want to get involved since it is risky. Trina claims she isn't a child, so Ava doesn't have to baby her. Ava can tell that their friendship is harming her. Ava says she is in trouble, and the FBI is forcing her to do things she dislikes. She claims that the only way she can stay alive is to do what she is instructed. Ava promises Trina they will never discuss this again. Trina thanks her for being honest and assures her that nothing will ever damage their friendship. She understands who she is, but she also recognizes her own potential for good. Trina claims that if she stops Kate's from hurting Christina, everyone else will notice. Ava vows she'll make things right somehow. Trina encourages her to reveal the truth. Ava cannot, not yet. Trina tells her that time is running out. At Sunny's, Jason assures him that the pharmacist has been securely transported to his island, away from Kate's. Sunny says they need to bring Valentine out now and will use Anna as bait. Jason is concerned that this may result in them being targeted by the PCPD. Sunny claims he did not want to cause trouble with Anna, but she turned him into an enemy. Suddenly, Anna appears. She warns Sunny that Ava has changed her story and believes Christina threatened to murder her. Sunny claims this is a lie, and it is all Jagger's fault. Anna agrees and feels he pressured Ava into making the remark, but she cannot prove it. Sonny claims none of this would have occurred if she had managed Valentine from the start. He claims Valentine tampered with his medications, was involved with Pikeman, and attempted to take him down. Sonny jokes that he might have done it all from Anna's bed. Anna informs Sonny that he set this all in motion years ago by putting Karen Wexler on that stage. Sonny pulls a frown and dismisses her. Anna claims she isn't here for him. Anna informs Jason that he must accompany her to the station because she has questions about Scott Baldwin's disappearance. They leave, and Anna tells Sunny, always a pleasure. Anna returns to the station and asks Jason where Scott is. He has no idea and claims he last saw him here with Ava. 
Anna informs him that she has received a credible information that Scott is missing. She also knows Kate's isn't above using Scott, like he did Christina. She is also unhappy that he told Sonny about Valentine. He claims he didn't tell him she let Valentine leave, only that he was behind the medication switch. Anna tells him that since his return, he has been straddling two worlds, Sonny's and hers, and that this must end. She tells him that he must choose. Anna reminds Jason that he has a second chance and does not need to return to Sonny. He can have a fulfilling life where he can be present for his children and Carly. He claims she understands more than anybody else that not everything is black and white. Anna believes he has matured since his early days with Sonny. He wonders when she learned better after being a double agent, was it because of Faison or Valentine? He claims she expects more from him despite repeatedly compromising herself, most recently. She confesses she is compromised, but he can leave. He assumes they're done and walks out. Anna claims she and Kate share one thing in common, they both vowed to protect and serve. She will never adopt John's techniques, but she will take down Sonny, and she hopes Jason is not standing next to him. Back at the gallery, Ava reflects on the accident and what occurred. When Sonny comes, she proceeds to leave. She wonders if he's here to kill her. Sonny claims that given what she did to Christina, her kid, and helping Kate's, she deserves to die, and his face should be the last thing she sees. However, Sonny claims he is not here to take her life, but to preserve it. Molly arrives and, outside the courthouse, learns from Sam what occurred. Sam says their mother held her own, while Kate's had a complete meltdown. Sam claims Kate's supplied no evidence and may face charges. She believes the accusations against Christina will be dismissed because there is no case, and Kate's is only attempting to reach Sonny. Sam finds the situation ludicrous, citing Christina's recent pregnancy loss as the reason. Molly and Sam catch up on GH, Sam quickly realizes what she has said and apologizes. She asks Molly why she isn't here. Molly admits she only found out about the hearing through a friend, the court did not want her to know since it could reflect partiality. She sobs since she was also with TJ discussing their daughter's burial. Sam embraces her sister. Christina, Sonny, and Alexis return to Alexis' home. Christina compliments her mother on her performance in court and expresses gratitude to her parents for their support. Alexis says they love and adore her, and Sonny promises to always protect her. Kate's walks to the gallery and laments to Ava about Christina's arrest and the judge's decision to release her. Ava inquires about Christina's arrest, as this is news to her. He explains that after they discussed her story concerning the images, he went ahead and arrested Christina. But now she's walking. Ava asks if he's spoken with Scott. He hasn't, and Ava is concerned because she hasn't heard from him. She believes she will need her lawyer now more than ever. Kate's claims she doesn't need Scott because he's her only hope left. He tells Ava that she must make the statement he wants, and that she will do so in the manner he specifies. She claims it's late and she's exhausted, so they'll deal with it tomorrow. Kate's rejects, citing a 48-hour deadline to resolve the issue. He says they're going to start now and improve her statement. Nina makes a call from somewhere outside. She says she's desperate, so she's contacted them. She notices they owe her a favor and is prepared to collect. Let's begin this week's column with what I consider to be the best and happiest portion of the week, the conclusion of Mac and Cody's father-slash-son tale. Having James flee only to be rescued by Cody was the ideal way for Mac to understand he was being an ass and let go of his resentment. It also made him realize that Cody was not the same person he was a year ago, or even when he first arrived in town. I can't wait for any pleasant Scorpio Jones Bell moments to happen. Felicia returns to the boathouse docks and asks Mac if he is pleased. He is and says she was correct. She laughs, she's always correct. They kiss. Anna arrives at Laura's workplace, as per her invitation. Laura informs that they have a meeting with the incoming WSB station chief. Laura is aware she recently arrested him. Anna says that Brennan has been acquitted and is now a fully accredited agent, and they will most likely receive no further explanation from the WSB. Brennan comes, and Laura explains that she set up this meeting because they all share common interests. 
Laura gets right to the point, believing that Anna and Brennan's shared background and skill sets present a one-of-a-kind opportunity. She wants them to find Valentin Cassidine. Anna claims the FBI is looking for him, which is beyond her reach. Brennan observes that the WSB strives not to meddle with FBI investigations. Laura is concerned since Valentine has a granddaughter. Anna tells Charlotte that Valentine would never endanger her. Laura receives a call, which interrupts their conversation. Something came up, so she excuses herself for a moment. Dr. Navarro departs, and Christina wonders what full recovery entails. Alexis believes it implies her body will heal. Christina inquires, what about the rest of me? Alexis admits that it will take time, but her heart will improve too. Thanks for watching if you like this video, so please don't forget to subscribe my channel and don't miss any update.